Hi, I'm Jessica, and I'm one of the CVTs and training specialists here at Dove Lewis. And today I'm going to talk to you about hand placement when it comes to CPR. Um, first, we're going to start with formation and positioning. I have a table that rises and lowers, and so I have made it at the height that is comfortable to me um, since I don't have a step stool accessible right now. But you will definitely want a step stool so that you're able to get up and over your patient, depending on which form of CPR compressions you're doing. Um, for patients that are larger, medium to large, you will put both of your palms over their chest, and we'll talk about the different positions in just a minute. You will want your elbows locked and your shoulders over your elbow and use your body weight over the patient's body. So see how my elbows are over my wrists, which are on top of each other, and then my shoulders are over my elbows and they're locked. When we're doing compressions, we wanna make sure that we're not having bent elbows because then the energy that you're pushing down on is going outwards versus down towards the patient. Another important thing to remember is to use your body weight and your stomach um, or your core, not your back when you're doing compressions. So being up over the patient will really help. We're already prone to back problems, so just be careful and take care of yourself using your core. There's a couple different techniques that we can use. We have the thoracic pump technique and the cardiac pump technique. The thoracic pump technique is going to be used on patients that are round chested or as wide as they are deep. So I think about, um, round Labradors or um, pit bulls, things like that, you're going to be putting your hands over the widest part of their chest. Um, so you can use their elbow to kind of gauge where that is. What you're doing is you are applying pressure to the thoracic cavity, uh, which is compressing the thoracic cavity and pushing blood out to the body. You are then allowing your recoil time or the time that you are lifting up from compressions to pull blood back in. So we're gonna do compressions like this in a patient about this size. Um, everybody's going to be a little bit different. I say Labrador and they may be a little bit more deep chested or keel chested. And in that case, we would use the cardiac pump technique where we are going over um, their heart. And using the cardiac pump technique is compressing their heart and pushing blood out to the body. We can also use the cardiac pump technique with smaller patients. So we have our medium small dog here. We can use less body weight on one of these guys and we're gonna kind of go down where their chest is, their heart is sitting over their sternum and do compressions here. Remember that we're compressing one third to one half the width of the chest. So we will take into consideration um, the compression depth uh, and our pressure on these smaller patients. This doing patients in sternal um, recumbency is also possible with our cardiac pump technique like so, you can even do them on their side, like this. There's little evidence in whether left or right recumbency matters in chest compressions, but I do find that it is easier to have the patients back towards you because when you're compressing, they might more move towards you. And if you're compressing with them the other way, they might move away from you. Um, for patients that are very round chested, such as bulldogs, um, Frenchies, patients like that, we can do these in um, dorsal recumbency and that might be helpful for helping them not roll as much. You could put towels or sandbags on either side and compress directly down on their sternum over where their heart sits. I hope that helps you better understand um, the different techniques that we have for CPR and you can find more tips on CPR such as these and other tips in our technician training kits.